Recording is in progress. Good. So this is a um, this is a talk mainly on sea breeze, and I'm going to talk some about some some RASP basics as well. Um, it's uh, it, it came about partly because um, some people asked about sea breeze, and we're in the period of time now where it becomes um, more relevant on our sites. So. What I'm going to do is cover some basics. I'm going to share my screen. I've pulled some slides out of um, my sort of Met talk, and uh, I'll walk you through those. Any any slides, anything I show on this, I'll make I'll stick on the uh, Telegram group at the end, so you can get them from there. Um, and for those who want the full Met slides, I'll dump those on there as well. So I'm going to, oops, let me share my screen. Uh, share screen and share that uh, one first. Sea Breeze PowerPoint, here we go. Share. Your sharing is paused, why is it paused? Screen sharing, okay, great. So let me bring it up so I can see it. Why is that? All right, good. So hopefully, so I was going to, was going to cover a few basics about what wind is, where it comes from, um, as the background to this. <clears throat> so the, the basics to that are, we need to understand two things. One is low pressure. Um, so low pressure is air mass that's rising, um, quite simply. And high pressure is air mass that's subsiding or air that's sinking. <clears throat> um, and if we look at what, what drives that, it's like, well, why, why, why does air rise? Well, basically, um, from the blue point of a sea breeze effect, the land gets heated by the sun, the air warms up. As a consequence, the air goes up. So you get an area of low pressure with the air rising. The rising air has got to go up and go somewhere so eventually it will go over and it will sink and that will give you an area of high pressure so we're basically looking at this simple effect of low pressure high pressure um and this basic rule which is the air will move from high pressure to low pressure um and to give you a bit more of a detailed diagram so you've got this so so You've got the warm air, which is pictured red with these arrows. So the sun's heating the ground. This air is rising. Um, it's got to go somewhere. It'll push out. It then will move, sink, come back down. And where, it, where it sinks, you've got high pressure. Because you've got a pressure, you've got low pressure, which is the red area. You've got high pressure, which is the blue area. The air will move from high pressure to low pressure um and that's the basic of how wind is generated and how why the air moves between three points so the looking at how that how that ties in with what's what a sea breeze is technically a, a, a sea breeze is a form of an anabatic wind um so this is basically winds caused by thermal activity on hills or inland as a result of reduction in pressure. Air then flows from an area of high pressure to establish equilibrium with the area of low pressure. So these include sea breezes, valley breezes, thermal winds. Um, and one we're looking at now is sea breezes. So we'll now look at the diagram and I'll explain a bit more detail about it. So this is a typical sort of sea breeze effect. So if we look at, let, let's take Devil's Dyke. Um, so you're going to be on the hill. The wind is north northwest. Um, so we shoot if we take a look at this this picture. So we've got the wind coming in from the left hand side. The sun's on the ground. So you've got the wind going this way. You've got the air rising. So that it will tend to push that rising air in the direction of the coast. That air is going to move out over the coast. 
Um, particularly in summer, the sea is going to be cooler. The air is going to sink over the over the water, over the sea. That will create high pressure. So we've now got low pressure building up on the land as the sun heats it. High pressure building up over the water as it cools and sinks. <clears throat> this creates this pressure difference. And so you will now find on the coast, the air will start to blow inland. Um, that air blowing inland is pushing up against the meteorological, the, the meteor wind, which is blowing against it. So you'll get this lit, I mean, it, you'll get this, so you've got this flow of air um, blowing towards the sea, and you've got this mass of air pushing back against it from the sea. Um, the air that, that that's blowing from the land, you're in that, it's sort of low pressure, good day, thermic, lots of nice flying. What's coming back is this sort of colder sea air. Um, and you're going to get this sort of, it doesn't happen at once. What you're going to get is this sort of, uh, it's like two masses of water, fluids pushing against one another. And you're going to get this sort of backwards and forwards occurring as the sea breeze builds and builds. Um, so the, the pressure of the sea breeze is building and it will get to a point where it will push the met wind back. Um, so it's doing that behind the dike all the time. It will be slowly making its way towards us. Um, and when it eventually hits the dike, you'll, what you'll find is that the air, the wind, the wind, you'll get this point where the wind almost stops. Um, and there'll be there'll be this little, little back and forth. It starts to come over the back and the meteor wind pushes it back. And you'll get this sort of backwards and forwards effect. And then what will happen is it will actually overpower that. It will come over the back and you'll just be completely in the sea breeze at that point. Um, the it can cut the strength of it. It can be weak. It can be very strong. Um, it, it, it totally depends on the day, pressure, how much it's being heated, how fast it's approaching, how strong the wind is, even the wind direction. Um, so that that's the basic sort of mechanics of it. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, okay. Sorry, is that someone trying to? Uh, let me see that someone else trying to get in. Um, all right, so the, so I was looking at someone had a question there. Um, so basically, the, the, essentially, that's what sea breeze is. It's the, it's a, it's, a, it's a difference in pressure generated by the heat on the land, causing low pressure, high pressure in the, over the sea, drives the air in. Um, the impact on us as pilots is that there's this mass of non-flyable air pushing in to our sights. Um, and it, it will, if you imagine you're going from, if you're soaring, you've got the wind on the hill, it's creating, you know, you've got a bit of venturi effect over the hill, it's giving you lift as it compresses, and you're soaring in this ridge lift. When the sea breeze comes through, the wind is no longer, you're no longer soaring in the wind. The wind now comes from behind. It is sinking air. Um, and if you happen to be on the ridge at the time, it will literally just drive you <laughs> down the front of the ridge. You'll get, it's like a, uh, it will just, you'll be in sinking air. There'll be zero lift. Um, and it's quite, I mean, it's quite something to see it when it when um, anyone is unfortunate to get caught in it with a lift, they'll be flying and let's go. Oh. It's just a straight sort of dive down the slope uh, with zero lift, no ability to get any lift at all. Um, so I think that those are the basic mechanics. Um, what I'll do is, for anyone who does have questions on it, let me just stop sharing the screen for a moment. Um, let me please ask them so we can clear up anything that's not understood right now. Uh, and then we'll talk a bit more about the different sites, what happens on them, um, and uh, yeah, what you need to be aware of. But I'm interested to get your what you want to know about it 
so I can answer those specifically. So if you've got questions, just unmute, ask, and we'll take it from there. Well, John, it's Steve. Yes, Steve. Um, so that this would only be then sort of affected, and sea breeze would only affect it if the wind's coming from landward and we're flying. So if it was a southerly down on the south coast, then we wouldn't be worrying about sea breeze? No, you still get sea breeze. Um, so Cape will will be hit by sea breeze. You still have the effect of the land is still being heated. Um, the sea is still cooler. You'll still get it. Will, what tends to happen is then it it will rise usually higher, go over the top of that, come down behind it, and when it builds, it actually drives. It, it, it you'll get this particular cave, and what you'll see is you'll be in this really quite nice, soarable air. Um, you know, let's say the wind speed is comfortable, it's like, I don't know, sort of 10 to 12 miles an hour. And then it, the, this cycle will feed the sea breeze, it will drive that air and it will accelerate it. It might suddenly come hoofing through at any of like five to 10 miles an hour faster. Um, and it'll bring in this cold, damp, sinking air. Um, and you go from having very pleasant flying to extremely unpleasant flying on a southwesterly side. Um, so it absolutely does affect Cabin and those sites. So second question then is I don't know, it's not probably not for everybody, but can you feel it? That that colder air or not? Um when it's you're more, in the air. Okay. It what I what I meant to get, which I didn't get was actually some photographs. Um you can see it. Uh, uh, yeah, on the training courses, I've noticed you, you usually can see like the cloud and the blue sky in front of it and, and things like that. It, it has, when when you get these, the, the, the air mixing light, it has this very distinct effect. What you'll see are these sort of like um, cloud tendrils sort of coming down uh, as, uh, as, the, as the two air masses meet. Um, and you can actually watch that line approaching the site. Um, so... It's very, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite distinct. It, it's it's one of those things which when you're on the hill and it's going to be sea, it looks like it's about sort of going to have a sea breeze. If you talk to other pilots, they'll point it out to you and you, you start to be able to spot the actual sort of sea breeze front as it's approaching the hill. Yeah. Um, so to that degree, yes, you can see it. Can you feel it? I, I it's usually the case by the time you can feel it, it's too late. It's already yeah, hit. True. Okay, <laughs> You've yeah. already got that sea air. Um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, but no, but it affects all of our sites. None of them are exempt from it. Um, no. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So, yeah. Cool. John, we've got a couple of questions from Andrew yeah. Lee. One of those, I think, is a question we've just had from Steve: How to recognise sea breeze is coming? But he then says, "What to do when it does arrive?" Okay. Um, it depends on where you are. Um, if you are, so let's obviously, if you're on the ground, you're on the ground. That's totally fine. So not much is going to happen. If you're in the air, um, you you kind of have a few decisions to make. Um, if you're high and away from the hill, then what will probably happen is you will get much higher um, because what what's what's happening now is you've got the sea breeze arriving it will because it's it's a cold air mass it will tend to drive under initially the other air mass so that you get this line of convergence with this air where the air you're in gets pushed up um and as long as you're staying on the lifty side of the um of the sea breeze it gets very lifty and so one of the things you might well notice is you're out flying and you just suddenly start you just going up like wherever you go you go up um you're almost certainly in this convergence that's coming through uh, uh we had this we actually had a bit bit of that on sunday at caven where there was the two masses were converging we went out in caven and furl we just went up basically um it was very buoyant so if that has happened to you then again you're now your concern now is staying on the lot the lifty side of the sea breeze sea breeze doesn't arrive at the dike and stop it can actually push in another easy another sort of 10 or 15 kilometers i mean so it's, it's going to keep going um if you go through 
that sea breeze front into the sea air, then it's uh, it's going to get rough, basically. Um, you're going to probably find you're going to get some collapses. You're going to have to have your wits about you. Um, and you're going to do basically do what you can to get down as safely as possible. Um, so let's assume you're not that high. It's coming through. You've noticed it's, you've seen the sea breezes coming in or the signs of it. Um, what's, what's now very difficult to do is actually get back to the hill. If you don't have enough height, then what will happen is as you approach, you'll hit the sinking air and you will go on a rapid descent and you'll pre end up slope landing, which then becomes really dangerous because you're now slope landing on a slope in descending air. So you're going to accelerate into that slope and go down it very fast. Um, and that's, yeah, that, that's like a really bad decision because there's nowhere to go. You can't turn and run. You're kind of stuffed at that point. So your best bet is actually push away from the hill um, and find some landing that's further out than you would normally land. Because now you have to allow the fact that you're in the sea breeze, it's coming from behind the hill. The hill to some degree will then create a lee effect of that wind. So if you, if you try and land too close to the bottom of the slope, you'll get horrendous rotor, rough air. You'll get collapses as you come into land. Um, it, it, it's really unpleasant. I mean, at the dike, it will stretch as far as the normal landing field where the road and the farmhouse is. So your often best bet is to go over that road into the next field and land that far out so you're away from the rotor and the effects and the rough air. Um, so the short answer is, if you're caught, if you're in the air and it happens, be overcautious, land much further away than you would normally land and just be prepared to walk back. Um, so that's one of the reasons, one of the things we are gonna look at. That's why I decided to tie that in with looking at RASP and how to get a good idea of when the sea breeze is coming in. So you've got an idea timing wise of when it's gonna happen. So you can, so then you can, you can factory and say, okay, I've got a safe margin up to this time, but from this point to this point, I'm kind of a bit more switched on and see what's, what's occurring. Um, if you're on the ground and sea breeze is coming in, I'm going to mention this because it happens. Um, it's It can be, if timed very, very precisely, a good way to get away from the hill from a, for a cross country. It is extremely dangerous, um, but you will see pilots doing it. So... I mentioned it because you 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 can get this phenomenon where the sea breeze is clearly coming in. You can see these tendrils. The wind is, you can almost feel it coming over the back and you'll see pilots launch. Um, do not follow them. Do not, unless you are feeling extremely skilled, extremely lucky, and you know exactly what's going on, do not follow them. Um, they will push out to try and connect with the convergence. Um, and as you will find out at the AGM, uh, one of our pilots, Catherine, is going to talk about what happened to her when she got it wrong. Um, it, it wasn't pleasant at all. So it's a very, 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 very risky maneuver. We do not promote it. We do not recommend it. Um, but you will see it. So um, don't don't get lulled into, oh, I see a bunch of guys going, oh, I'm going to go with them. It's like, just make sure you know exactly what's occurring. And my advice is do not mess about with the sea breeze. It it's, can be really dangerous. Um, Can I ask a question on on, yeah. on that exact point? Um, so you've covered if the sea breeze is coming in and you need to get down or stay down, but if you're nice and high already, it sounds like the sea breeze is almost like a sort of portable ridge that's come in, and the, and the let's say the south facing the south going air the uh, the dike is now going to go over that too. What what do you do then? Presumably you can fly a long way with it. Is that um, right? Technically, yes, you can, provided you understand it and you, you know what to look for and you stay on the lifty side of it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the first person to actually make take advantage of that and exploit that was Mike Millwood from The Loft many, many years ago. Um, he was one of our first pilots who ever actually figured out how to make it work and, and how, to fly, um, uh, how, how to fly the Seabreeze front. 
um, it does produce, and I'll, I'm going to show you this on, if I can find an example, I'll show it on RASP as well. You do get this one, you get this amazing line of convergence along the coast of lifting air. Um, and if you can get into it and you can work it, yeah, you can, you might get like a really lovely flight all the way to Rye or something in this, in this air. Um, you, you have to kind of understand though, it, it's not static, it is moving. So that's why you have to kind of really figure it out, work with it. Um, and it's quite easy to get it wrong and go, it see breeze front, and drop behind it. And then you just, you, you, you're right, the flight's over. You're not going to get back through it. You're just coping with whatever's going on. So again, it's, um, it's something that I would only recommend to an experienced cross-country pilot to try where you've done regular cross countries, you understand your wing, you've flown in rough air, you know how to deal with it, you know what clouds do. There's a whole lot of other stuff that I would you can build up to. It's not something I would, it's my the sort of first potential XC I would advise someone trying to get a good flight. Um, but yes, to answer your question, it can be used, it is used. Um, and it does require that level of technical understanding to make the most of it. We've got three questions on the chat, John, which yeah. might be appropriate to deal with now. Firstly, Chris, who asks, does a sea breeze come at a similar time each day? And how far inland can a sea breeze travel? Um, okay, so does it come at a similar time? It's, well, it, if we say between 12 and three, then yeah, it's a similar time. <laughs> it's a, it, it depends on, it depends on, all sorts of factors, uh, you know, how hot it is, wind strength, um, uh, um, humidity, uh, there's a whole bunch of factors, but we'll look at how you can see when it's coming in. That's what we're going to take a look at RASP as well. How far inland gained pet for us? Uh, I mean, it will push a good, a good 20 kilometers inland here. Um, it's if you're in, like Wales, for example, it's surprise because of the valleys, you can be like 40 kilometers, 40, 50 kilometers away from the coast and you will get hit by sea breeze. Um, so it depends on the, the structure of the, the, like the, you know, the topology of the land and how it shapes and how it flows air. Um, uh, yeah, but for us, it's, it doesn't stop at the dive. It keeps going. It will push way past that. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm fair to say about 25k it goes inland around here. I could be wrong on that point. I'm sure someone will check. But um, but yeah, uh, what was it? There was another part of that. Um, we've got we've got a number of other questions. They're coming thick and fast. Um, right. How is asked at what speed does the sea breeze front move forward? Um, okay, so oh well, let's just finish, let's finish the other one about does it come at the same sort of time and strength each day? Short answer is no. Um, and it, it really does depend on which site you're on, where it's starting from. Um, you know, for example, at High and Over, because High and Over is we've at the the end of that or part way down that valley. That's designed to funnel a sea breeze very nicely straight up the valley. So that tends to do that. It, it um, so that will accelerate it because it's got less it's not some huge wide area it's this narrow funnel it will accelerate the sea air um and there you can actually kind of see this it's almost like the sea like a very light sea mist flowing up the, above the river towards you um so in terms of the strength of it if that that re there is it's not always the same strength sometimes you can get a very light sea breeze um you get sometimes you get days where it sea breezes and it backs off again. It actually comes over the met wind, picks up, pushes it back, and you can carry on flying. Um, generally, though, once it has sea breeze, yes, it's sea breeze. It, it's it's it, 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 it's it's dominated the wind formation. You're not flying there again that day. Um, I can't say every single time because I know exceptions when it doesn't do that. But the general case is that's your days flying over on that site. Um, a lot of people might head to cave at that point and fly in and fly in the sea air. 
usually a bit rough and ready, but um, some people do it. So yes, uh, we're, we are limited in summer. Our, um, you kind of want to be on a site. The mornings are the best time for our northerly sites. It's perhaps worth emphasising a couple of points that you made earlier in terms of the speed of the sea breeze front. Partly it will depend on the temperature differential between the sea air and the land air and the gradient. Yeah. And secondly, it will depend on the strength of the met wind because it's pushing against the met wind. If you've got a light met wind, then the sea breeze is likely to dominate it more easily than if you've got a strong met wind. Yeah, so weirdly, it, it, what can then happen on a light met wind, you sometimes get a lighter sea breeze because it can start pushing through. It doesn't, it's not overcoming it's not having to build 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 and then come hammering through um so it's uh but it, the honest truth is it varies and it it's one of these things where you need you know, as you're aware of it and you see it coming through um it it will you'll notice sometimes it's strong sometimes it's light either way on our northerly sites that's the end of your flying on the site um even if it's a light lightly coming over the back it, it makes it non-soarable and you, you know you're not going to saw that site you're not going to launch so that that's it basically i think that answers tom's question of once it's come in does it stay all day uh, there's also a question from ben is the sea breeze necessarily rough air or is that just the case when it sweeps over the hill and you're suddenly on the lee side of the hill um is it Okay, it's a good point. From our from our point of view, I mean, I suppose if you went, you were on the coast, th then uh, it, no, it's probably reasonably laminar at that point. Um, it is the mixing which is creating the roughness. You've got the sea air pushing under the the existing air mass that's there. You've got the fact it's we've got bits of rising ground. It's going over the hill, um, so it's. It is the structure of the land you're in that makes it turbulent and the mixing between the two layers that makes it turbulent. So you've got these two air masses coming together. That is going to be a problem. If you, so if you're then in the, like behind the sea breeze, so you're not in that mix area, what you'll tend to find is it won't be as rough, um, but equally it won't be thermic. It, it, it tends to kill thermic activity. It's just very sinking air. Um, to be fair, I've not flown that much in in sea breezes. So my experience is normally what happens as it comes through and the air mass there. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say that it's not as rough further back, but equally it's not nice laminar um, smooth air. It's pretty laminar at uh, <laughs> New Haven. Yeah, but you're also lower. You're in that. Um, you're not. You know. You're in that sort of what zero to 100 foot band 200 foot band of air you're not in the next layer up where it's um you know you're still going to have at a high level you've still got the met wind blowing over the top and this coming underneath so you're going to get this sort of shear effect at some point um and that will create its own degree of turbulence i mean it's um, i guess it's that mixing that you're seeing when you see the tendrils yeah yeah Exactly. You see the two coming together and it's one's coming down, one's going over, and it's then pushing that sort of damper air down and causing that, that sort of tendril thing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I know plenty of people that, that fly the sea breeze, have gone through it, and they don't all get collapsed and stuff, but they certainly don't get lift. That is the end of the flying day. They've gone through, they're now in sinking air. Um, uh, but yeah, but you don't want to be in that mix. <laughs> you don't want to be one side of it or the other to be safe. I think that's covered the written questions. Um, okay, great. Do you want to move on? Oh, yeah, cool. All right, so that's, um, I think, does, everyone, uh, does that kind of answer people's question about the sea breeze, what it is, why we don't fly it? Um, so what I'll do next is, the next bit we want to take a look at then is, is ROS and how we can use that as a tool for helping you flying, predicting the sea, not just predicting the sea breeze, but looking at when it's a good time to fly. Um, so let me bring up my next bit on RASP. 
Um, let's go back and share the PowerPoint first, then we'll actually look at RASP itself. Uh, let's bring this up. Um, get rid of that one. Sorry, I'm just messing about everything. Give me two secs. Let's see, restart, met goals now. Folder right. Seabreeze using RASP. Uh, to be honest, rather than go through all these notes, I'm just going to bring RASP up. It'll be simpler. I'm going to bring up RASP, share the screen, and we'll go through that. So, RASP. Um, share that quickly. Where has my thing gone? Share screen, grasp, and share. Okay, so we should now have uh, QR sharing. Yes. Okay. All right. So hopefully you can now see. Um, oops. Chrome. Let's go back to. So, grasp itself. If um, let's push that up a little bit. I'll, I'll post the link, but it's basically here. Uh, this sort of rastratus.org.uk, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll dump that link down. So RASP itself, itself out of the way, is it gives you a brief, it's a regional atmospheric soaring prediction, um, and it talks about blip map. Blip, it's talking about the ba it's boundary layer information. Um, the boundary layer is the the area of air that we fly in. That's considered the boundary um, boundary air. And John, you, sorry, you've got some window or something open, which for me and I expect for others is obscuring the bottom half of your screen share. Oh, okay. Is that the? I think that's probably. Let's move that out of the way. Um, yeah, it's gone there. Okay, great. Yeah, that was um... <laughs> cool. Try get out of the way. All right, good. Uh, okay, so let me drag this back up. So when you go to RASP, um, there, there are various options. Um, and what I want to look at is just one particular point, which for now is going to be probably the easiest thing to get to grips with and the easiest thing for me to explain. Um, and that's this thing called the Blip Spot Maker. Blip, blip Spot Maker. Um, so this gives information about a site for the entire day. Um, and what it uses for this are things called BGA, which is the British Gliding Association Turn Points. Um, I will just, I mean, set up a lock of the map. I'll just explain what those are and where you can see them. Um, if, if, you, if you go to, if we just go to, I'll use RAS Mobile to give the better screen. If we go to RASP, go to RASP Mobile, and then on the left-hand side here is a little box which gives us three options. And if we select BGA turn points, you can see it then populates the map with all the BGA turn points. These are basically preset waypoints that sailplanes use for planning their routes out for the day. Um, and we're quite fortunate in that in our area we've got loads of the damn things <laughs> and they only they main they tend to coincide with um a our sites and b our cross-country routes um but basically what it means is if you want to identify them uh you basically go to one stick a mouse over it and it'll give you its abbreviation so we've got truly devil's dyke ditchling beacon uh, Lewis North, I believe, uh, Lewis West, Angline, um, and so on. And we also got Pearl Beacon. So they're actually very nicely placed to give us information. Um, I'll take a look at a couple of them. We'll look at uh, we'll look at Devil's Dyke, and which is DDK, and we'll look at Pearl Beacon FIB. Um, so you can note down the key ones that you want. Um, 
from a cross country point of view, Ben, one of the things I do is I look at turn points throughout the route and then use what we're about to look to do to figure out what how it will be as you progress through the day. Which I'll, but we'll take a look at that in a second. So let's go back to our list of options. We're going to go back to our blitz spot maker and we're going to choose Devil's Dyke. Um, DDK and DDK, DDK, DDK. That's where it is. Devil's Dyke. And we'll look at, let's take a look at Saturday, which I think is potentially the first pliable day of the week. So we'll look at something useful rather than looking at a day where it's just not pliable. And you click, so you select the turn point, you select the day, you click generate. Um, what it then does, yeah, well, this far ahead, um, <laughs> that's entertaining. Uh, so what, what it'll then do is generate a series of charts for you. And it gives you information throughout the day. Um, I, I'm going to guess that because it's so far ahead, it's just about as random as you can get it at the moment. Um, as the days progress, it, this will look a lot better. But let's just go, take a look anyway. Uh, it's probably one of the worst examples of a chart I could think of to show you. Um, so we... I think, I think you at, can conclude, John, that some of the data points there are not right where you've got those troughs. Yeah. It just, it's, it's basically trying to second guess something too far ahead and it's just not working. Um, that would be a very strange day. But nonetheless, let's read it as it is. And um, the the blue line we have is thermal height. And this is basically predicting a very strange day. <laughs> get a climb, nothing for an hour or so. Get some climbs, nothing for an hour or so. Get some climbs, nothing for an hour or so. Um, normally, well, I won't go normal. That's what it shows. So what it's giving us is a prediction on how thermic it's going to be how long that thermal is going to, how long that day is going to last. Um, and yeah, to what, to whether it'd be worth, based on that, it would be a very obscure day. Um, the other main thing you get in is the, um, you actually get, yeah, this is, this is really obscure. You'll get the wind direction, which is this green line here. Um, it's actually very strange. It's kind of switching from north to north. I, I think because it's so, I'm going to actually look at one that's a bit closer because th this is so uh, unhelpful. Um, let's just go back to. I know the weather's absolutely rubbish, but let's see what's happening tomorrow there. Okay. This is kind of more, this is, it just makes a bit more sense. This is more like the kind of graph you'd expect to see. So this basically, what this will show you is thermal activity, um, very little happening first thing. It starts to build up from about 10 o'clock. You've got climbs to about 1500 feet. It's giving us a thermal height of about three to three and a half thousand feet. That runs through the afternoon and then it drops down at five o'clock. Um, your cloud base, it's predicting cloud base, which is this gray line. And it's basically showing in the middle of the day, you're going to get to cloud base. Um, and if we look at the surface wind on this, um, so here, very westerly, so west to southwest, uh, certainly nothing not going to do anything with that um for if if we had a sea what you would see for a sea breeze would be um yeah you know, you'd have a very sort of like northerly line running through and then you see this sudden switch where it would suddenly switch to southerly um i'm just trying to find if i can find one let's just i'll look another day we'll just see if we can just find one that shows a sea breeze um i have a horrible feeling i won't find anything just because of the conditions. Yeah, no, that's rubbish. Okay. So, but the blip slot maker um 
is we'll, we'll stick with Saturday for now. Uh, one of the things you I'm gonna that this does highlight is today's Wednesday, so it's Thursday, Friday, so RASP more than two or three days ahead um, is pretty inaccurate. And if you check this out, if you check this graph daily from now on for Saturday, you will see it will change dramatically on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it will start to get more and more accurate. Uh, it's one of the reasons why, um, you, you know, very often if you plan to go to a site, uh, you look at it that night before it makes some decisions. We'll, we'll then check it again on that morning and see what's happening, what are the conditions. If we just pull this up briefly, that's that's Devil's Dyke. Uh, I'll just bring up Phil Beacon. This is a comparison for the same day. I'm going to suspect it's going to be uh, Phil Beacon Saturday. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, I, I'd be amazed if it stays like that over the next couple of days. I think we're just looking at data that's being badly forecast, and it's just trying to understand what's going on with the various fronts and things coming through, and it's getting it badly wrong. Um, so I would feel happy to say that it's not worth trying to interpret that. Um, but what it does give you is an overview of the day. So you can take a look, you can see a site, and you can see, okay, where, when's it thermic? Uh, when does that drop off? Um, you know, is that a good place to be all day? Do I need to go somewhere else? Uh, and if you're starting to look at cross-country flying, then one thing I was mentioning to Ben is you can say, okay, well, from Devil's Dyke, if we then took a look at, we went further inland and we looked at Heathfield, which is, I believe, H-E-E, -E, which is a, a sort of a classic point to go through from Devil's Dyke. Again, we'll go Saturday. I don't know why it's, these are so. Uh, again, it wouldn't, it, <laughs> if, if we look at the um, foul base, we can basically see Cloud base steadily it is slowly going up throughout the day. Um, I'd be interested to see how that develops over the next couple of days and whether it actually is a good cross country route or it's better to go sort of more inland. Um, but the key things to use are this chart and this one on the wind direction. See if you're getting this sudden change in wind from northerly to southerly. If that's occurring, that is your sea breeze, and that will give you a, a predicted time of when it's going to happen. And what you'll also get from this is the graph above it is the wind speed. So you can take a look at this and you can see, okay, is it going to accelerate at that point? Is it picking up? Is it suddenly sea breezing and the wind changing a lot? Um, or is it is it sea breezing, but there's no real change in the wind strength? Uh, and this will this will give you all that data. Um, I will show you. Okay, before I show you anything else, let's take some. Let's just take some questions on that point. So, anyone got any questions just on that real those basic basics of RASP? Uh, John, yeah, yeah. You were saying about a change in wind direction from north to south on that RASP. Uh, so on the blitz plot, uh, plot you showed the one to change from north to south. No. There's a change to northeast, northwest. That, and that's like being wrapped around a, a, a pencil or something. Uh, I say, uh, unfortunately, let, let, let's bring one up that's a bit closer because it's just too uh, that far ahead. I, I mean, normally I would never look at Ross that far, more than a few days ahead. Um, this isn't helping at all. But let's, let's take Friday for Heathfield and we'll see something that's vaguely set more sensible. Uh, so if we look at the wind direction on this one that's kind of more what you expect to see where it, 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 there's a gradual change in wind direction um, if it was sea breezing we would see, we would at one point see a marked change in it um, just because it would go it would switch 
from north to south or northwest to southwest. Um, I what I'll have to do is find a chart on a day where it is like that. I will save it and publish it. But for now, I don't have one. Um, I need a good sea breeze day. One thing, John, which I find quite interesting and useful, and I'll post a screenshot from my phone on Telegram. On Windy, you can get um, an overview with arrows showing the wind speed and direction. And if you look at Sunday, seven o'clock in the morning, you've got a northerly wind everywhere. If you go to one o'clock in the afternoon, you've got a northerly met wind showing and a southerly sea breeze coming in and a lower wind speed through the convergence where the two are pushing against each other. Right. Um, well, let's have a look at that. Let's take a look at Sunday's. Let's look at Sunday for Devil's Dyke. Let's see if that gives us a slightly better. Um... John, yes. while you get that up, just yeah. um, can you say that the graph that shows the two wind speeds, one on the hill and one higher up, the, the higher up wind speed, what, what height does that calculate it at? Um, it, it's the, it's basically, the it's looking at cloud base. So it will vary. Okay. Um, it's the sort of, uh, um, it, it's the boundary, yes, whatever it is, that, it's at that boundary layer which is the top of our flyable space, for, which goes up and down for the day. Um, well, that's fine. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It is a key, again, for cross-country pilots, um, you only really need surface wind for launching and landing. Because at that point, you're then in a different band of air. And it's one of the things that um, you can, checking out the boundary layer wind for RAS is actually quite crucial give you an idea of what you'll be flying in when you're getting up towards cloud base. So that's a really useful tip. Um, yes, yeah, so this is uh, my, my Devil's Dyke, Devil's Dyke generate Sunday. Um, let's take a look. So the wind direction here, um, this is going from southerly to northerly, but this is the kind of thing you'd expect to see up the other way around for a sea breeze. So this is, you've got suddenly all day, at the end of the day, it then switches and goes north. So you've got here at six o'clock, this sudden wind change in direction. Um, but uh, yeah, let me just quickly show you. So was there any other question on this graph? No. Okay. Um, so if that, if it, no, I'll just, oops, come back screen, don't crash. Sorry, my computer's just blanked out on me. Right, so I'll answer one of Ben's questions now. Um, if you go to, not what I won't cover is soundings, but I tend to use, they, they give you an option of RAS desktop or RAS mobile. My preference is RAS mobile because it takes up the whole screen. <laughs> The desktop one scrunches it down into a small window. Um, but you'll see uh, on the left here, you've got your, your various options for search. I'm going to extend a bit, go a bit more into Ross. The When you first go in, it gives you a limited set of um, things to look at. And these are the main ones people are interested in. Um, and what it, what it will give you is surface wind, at 10 meters, which is kind of where we need to, to be. Um, that was today. Looks fairly accurate to me. Um, let's just take a quick look at, let's go ahead to, let's see what it says for Saturday. Uh, so it gives you, you can get an overview of what's happening across the country. On the right hand side, you've got your wind scale. All the wind speeds on RASP are in knots. So you have to multiply it up to get miles per hour. Um, now, one of the things from a cross country point of view, the one that is always worth looking at is the boundary layer average wind. Um, this is giving you an idea of how wind direction stuff higher up. 
Um, and even if you're flying locally, it kind of gives you an idea of what, if you get into climbs, what you're going to run into. The, what I'm going to see, I don't think we'll have anything, but the one for, sea, for seeing where the sea breeze is, is this one, which is the boundary layer max up, down, in brackets, convergence. And, okay, what you'll get, there's a couple of nice examples here, oops, is uh, not on our coast, but I just focus on that. What you'll see is this line, like this one running down the um, the coast, where that's a line of convergence. That'll be some sort of sea breeze effect on the coast there. Um, I know it's probably the flattest area of the country. You're not going to go fly there unless you're being sort of tow launch. Uh, but if I, what I'll do is, it's, we'll just see it. We'll take okay look so you've got really strong convergence there at 10 o'clock in the morning um with with these charts if you just click on the screen it progresses you hour by hour through so you can actually go 10 o'clock drop there's some really massive lift there at 11 it's dying off and it's then uh, it's kind of fades away but that that line there is your sea breeze convergence and if we take a look on the coast down here um again we'll go back to i'll switch it back start at 10. so along the coast here between um sort of from uh so like pool through to isle of white there's very little there's there's very little convergence occurring <clears throat> 10 o'clock in the morning that's all we expect 11 it's almost complete it's there's no nothing there at all 12 nothing so much is happening so now at one o'clock, we can start to see something starting to build. Uh, two o'clock. And then at three o'clock, we, we, you get around this area of sort of cool to the Isle of Wight, a huge line of convergence that's building up, develops more, and then it starts to push inland and fade away. Um, but that's that will show you what the sea breeze is doing, where it is, where the line of convergence is on any given day. So basically, if you come into RASP, open the screen, go to this boundary layer, max up, down convergence, and just start at around 11 o'clock. Look for these areas on the coast where you've got, it's going sort of uh, orange to red. Um, and to see if let's just have a quick look at another day just to see what's happening. Sunday, oops, sorry. Now this is going to Lally. So I don't rate later in the week. But um, one more. Oh, okay. There we go. Don't know how accurate this is, but okay. So here we can see, let's go back an hour. Oh, convergence everywhere on, on Monday. <laughs> I very much doubt that's the case. But very strong, like, potentially a very strong line of convergence along the coast. Uh, dies by one o'clock and it's fading away to nothing but by the afternoon. Um, but yeah, but we're looking for this line, this sort of orange to red line along the coast. And, and how it moves, where it's positioned, um, and you know, is it is it going over our flying sites? Is it behind the flying sites? And it will show you sort of visually where the sea breeze is coming in, basically. Um, all right. Any so uh, any questions on that? Is that uh, try not to get too complex into this? <clears throat> you lost everybody. <laughs> Okay, so for now, to get if you want to start using RASP, my, my advice is um, stick with the the blip spots, the blip spots. Um, take a look at what's happening on the day or the next day, um, and, and actually compare it. Start looking at how it fits in with your day there, um, but use it. To start predicting sea breeze. Now it may be that you'll get days where there is no sea breeze and you've got a nice northwesterly all day long, which is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but do take note of it. You know, if, if you see that 
sudden drop, if you see that change in the wind, um, then make a note of when that's occurring. Talk to other pilots on the hill. And then around that time, start looking out for signs, get people to point out to you what's going on, um, etc. John, I have a question, if I yeah, may. Um, absolutely. You've used the blip spot maker to generate your graphs. Is there a reason mm. that you use that rather than the link just above it, RASP by turn point, which I think produces the same results? Um, I find the... Let's have a look. I think RASP by turn point... Um, only because I find the blip spot one easier. I'm not quite, I've not looked at the difference between the two to see exactly what one produces and the other doesn't. Um, I think the reason I use the blip spot one is because you, you can, I was, I used to create my own links with it. You can actually create links and embed them in other things. So this is what I've always used. Um, but yeah, technically I don't think there is a difference between the two. <laughs> I do use RASP by turn point because it's just easier on a right. phone. You just put in a turn point and the date. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't use it on my phone. I use it on the PC. But uh, no, it's a good point. To be honest, I've never used RASP by turn point. I've always used the blip spot maker. Um, but uh, I reckon you're right. I don't see any difference between the two. Um, yeah. Are there any apps that... Um can sort of give us a, a warning on our phones or something that the sea breeze is coming? Not that I know of. Um, uh, if anyone knows of one, then, uh, yeah, ask. That, but I don't think so. It, it's one of these things where, um, because it is localised, you, you, you have to look at what's happening on the day, what's happening when you're in the air, um, it is, it's one of those points of examining the weather constantly as you fly. Um, yeah. And you, you just cannot, you know, you, the fact that the wind is the wind and conditions doing something when you take off does not mean it'd be doing that in half an hour or an hour's time. So it is that thing of constantly looking at the weather and the conditions, looking at other pilots. Um, you know, if you suddenly see a whole bunch of pilots landing, it's usually a good idea to land because they don't, Loads of them don't normally land for no reason. Um, mm. And you can just take off again. I, I would rely on what you see yeah. rather than an yeah. app. You look at an app and it tells you the forecast is 10 miles an hour northerly wind and you're stood on the hill and you know that it's five miles an hour and it's coming from the northeast. Which one of you is right? And it's the same with the sea breeze. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with any app, any forecast, is no, that... They're not focused. They're not going to tell you what it's like in that, you know, quarter of a mile of space that you're in. It's going to, it's going to average it out over probably like a four or five kilometer area at, at best. Um, and that, I think RASP, RASP is like in four kilometer squares off the top of my head. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's pretty accurate for, for a forecast. Can I ask on that? On that yeah. point, um, as the sea breeze comes in, or indeed as it's about to come in even more, would you expect to see a kind of a fall in sea level pressure or a, a, a rise in a steep rise or fall in uh, in the barometer, as it were? At, at, at the point where you are? Um, yeah, if, you're, if I'm stood on the ground, the sea breeze is going to come in. Would I expect to see the air pressure go down or go up or, or nothing in particular? I don't know. Let's have a look. I guess technically... There's a bit of low pressure that's being replaced by a high pressure system pushing in. I don't. I don't think it'd be that significant. Okay. I don't think it's going Thanks. to change the overall met pressure that significantly. And I don't think I could be absolutely will, wrong on this point. Um, what you will often get, Andrew, is hmm. that the wind drops because you're in the sort of area where it's coming from the north and south, and they're evening each other out. So you do sometimes feel that the wind speed drops before it starts coming over the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that, the that, physical clue, a sort of cancelling out of the winds. 
on 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 an orderly side, yeah, that's that's definitely you'll 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 see this kind of battle between the two. You won't see it. You'll experience this battle going on with uh, as the sea breeze approaches. It, it, it's obviously pushing against the, the meteor wind. Um, it's not. It's not a cut. It's not you know like a, oh it happens at this point or it's a distinct thing. It's going on all the time. You know it's already happening behind the site because it's building behind the site and it's now making its way towards where we take off. You know we we're, we're interested at the point where it reaches us. Doesn't mean that's when it the sea breeze front happens. It's happening all the time as soon as it starts to build. Um, it's just making its way. That front is making its way towards us that's all so um yeah and that's why you'll often see you could be on the dike happily you know uh happily thermaling and you might have a mate on the coast saying oh i've got this you know i'm out dinghy sailing and it's just got this lovely southwesterly wind and it's only like sort of five kilometers away um because there it's blown it's now most definitely sea breeze it's on the it's the wind is on shore on the dike it's not it's still blowing in the right direction and somewhere in between you know probably around uh, sort of uh on the 27 or something there'll be no wind it will just die because th that will be in that that midpoint yeah okay cool. um any any other questions on this is a have you picked all the ones up from the chat robin i see there's a bunch in there but Sorry, yes, we're up to date on the chat. Okay, great. Cool. Just a, a quick note. If you go to the trick point drop down, you can type in DDK and it'll go straight there. Um okay, great. It's just to make it easier. All right. It saves great. you like scrolling through. DDK. Oh yeah, if you just type in DDK. Yeah, unfortunately, I mine doesn't do that. Oh. Uh, annoyingly that's my scroll i've tried people say just type in i type it in. it just all it does if i do d d and then go k it just stops at dar because the last d it got to oh, that's annoying uh it, it is slightly annoying um oh. but yeah other people say well i just type it in i said it doesn't work on my system <laughs> no maybe it's my browser i don't know um maybe the raspberry turn point will do that nicely for us No, it doesn't work. If it works for you, brilliant. Um, but it doesn't work for me, unfortunately. So I have to scroll, as annoying as that might be for you. Anyway, all right, cool. Um, any other any other questions to do with sort of sea breeze and just RAS basics? Uh, I mean, the idea is to the idea of the RAS thing is just to get you to look at it, start using it. Um, I don't want it. You know, I've got other notes and talks where we go into it in a lot more detail and not. Don't want to take it there on this one but it's just to make you just to make you see okay there are a few very easy things you can use on it without having to get super complex and the blip the, the you know the blips the blip spot makers or rasp by turn point are are really useful for seeing you know even if you're staying at one site it will give you that overview of the whole day um in terms of wind strength liftiness direction what's happening um and it's just a good guide to what what will, what will be going on, and it's reasonably accurate. Um, you know, from a cross country flying point of view, we we can predict entire cross country flights based on what it what it shows, um, and it's free. There are other apps that aren't free that do a better job, but for what it is, uh, it, it's a great little working model. John, can I contribute at all? I, I, yeah, I yeah, always, yeah, absolutely. I, I, ben. No, please I've do. Always been a bit, I've always been a bit skeptical about getting too far into the detail, but an experience last week made me think I really need to understand RAS better. I went out to Wales, went to a farmer's site on on windy, and every forecast I looked at, it looked absolutely perfect for cross country from farmers uh, in the southeasterly breeze going northwest up to. Um, to Aberystwyth, I was thinking about a 25 kilometer flight, but it would have been perfect. Yeah, got there, and the wind was actually it was whistling past, it looked like it should have been about 11 miles an hour, it was more like 20 23. Right, and I hung out for a few hours and it didn't get any better. And what a local explained to me once he got there because he also had looked at that and thought it was, it was going to be a perfect day. There was an inversion 
not too far above the hill. It's a high site, uh, and the inversion right. above the hill was basically so, squeezing the air, so accelerating through. And it should have been 10 miles an hour, but as I say, it was 20. And I'd, I, I kind of said to him, I, how, how should I have known that? And he said, well, take a look at RASP. And we looked at it together. It was via the SkySight app, but we, we weren't on the RASP page. Yeah. And you could see exactly where the inversion was by looking yeah. at the graphs. And the inversion, it, it, it was clear as day that there was an inversion a few hundred meters above the hill, and that, that's what was causing it. And if we'd been if I'd been able to understand that in advance, I may yeah. have avoided or wasted five hours, which was. But I just I ended up thinking I've really got to understand this better and be able okay. to start using what work. I'll do, I will drop um in my full in in, in my full met notes, I actually cover um what you want to look at soundings basically um i won't uh oh sorry does, does anyone mind if you have a quick look at soundings we've basically covered the other thing i uh, just very very quick introduction to them um soundings so this is um again I, I'll, I'll publish my, my notes because i explain this in some detail now about what all these lines mean um but basically, this is what you need to be looking at, Ben. Yeah, and that 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 was exactly the graph you showed me. It was clear as day because there was a sort of there was an yeah. there was a, a video an inversion. The side. But, yeah, but he said, "Well, yeah. that's the inversion." Yeah. So what I'll do, um, the I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll stop sharing it for the moment. I'm going to let me stop the share. Uh, I will put on to Telegram uh, my full Met notes, which is a whole PowerPoint thing on everything to do with meteorology for the pilot exam but in that i actually explain all the basics of soundings and gives you enough data to actually go through them and understand them um so that should help you then get get to grips with them and, and how to use them um the so, so essentially when you're using ras you've got these different layers you've got the overall you've got a map which shows you the entire country so you get like see okay what's happening across the country um you've got the blip map the blip spot makers which give you details of what's happening at a site throughout the day um, and then you get soundings which give you what's happening at a site at a specific moment in time so to get an idea of how so for soundings you'd have to look at the site like several to see how they progress um that's quite technical uh, and really that's more for the next stage if you want to go sort of cross country and you're planning on traveling um but for now um yeah start just start to use raft just get familiar with it use that blip spot maker start to see what's happening with the weather be aware of sea breeze look at wind changes um that's kind of the gist of it really um could i add one point on soundings yes that is that the sites where soundings are are not the same as the BGA turn points. Yeah, it's, you just have to extrapolate you have to find a little the bit. Nearest, yeah, like Hurstmans, yeah. Dugal, Exeter was the example you just showed. Yeah, um, but they do do soundings for each turn point on RASP. Okay. The so you know. I didn't realize. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. That's they have a look. They do soundings by turn point. So you can actually, that's the custom soundings. So you can uh, actually pick uh, a turn point. I've not used the custom one. I've just used the standard one, which. Yeah. No, no. They go to. Um... Sorry, I should have left it on the screen. There is a custom sounding. There's custom soundings. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. And so you can actually get one for each of the VGA turn points. Um, but they are they're kind of more extrapolated but they work they're, they're very good i have to say not very good <laughs> but telling you what's happening during the day um all right cool anything else any other points i mean, really uh, this is for you guys and um the, the, the main thing i wanted to do was really get across about sea breeze how it affects us and how for the next six months you really have to be aware of it um it is it is dangerous if you get it wrong uh i've seen probably more incidents in sea breeze than anything else through people getting it wrong um and yeah it's something you have to understand and respect and not play around with um 
And I think, Ben, you're probably at a dangerous point with it because you're into that cross-country thing and you'll be in that group of people wanting to make the most of it and putting yourself in that position. Um, so it's something to really, for you to really get to grips with and understand um, and, you know, talk to more experienced pilots about uh, and get a really good sense of when it's okay to use it and when it's not, you know, so, um, and uh, yeah, it's quite crucial. And especially if you're in Wales, really get to grips with it because it will just travel up the valleys much further than you think it's going to. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Otherwise, um, I'm happy to cover it. But that really was the gist of it. Uh, hopefully, you've got something from it. I was a little bit disjointed. I did plan uh, to do really it. Really helpful. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Uh, what I'll do, I'm just going to um, stop the recording. I think that's enough for. Uh,